where we're going to look, John 1, 1. Very, very familiar passage of scripture. Most of you probably can quote it. I like to go back sometimes and quote those familiar scriptures in my life, you know, come to my mind. Somebody asked me one time, if they do take your Bibles in America one day, do you have enough scripture memorized to be able to quote some verses that will give people hope? You know what? It's not too late. It's not too late to memorize a few scriptures. You don't have to learn them all, but it sure is good to have a few on hand. And John 1, 1 is tremendous scripture to me because I know that the Bible is God's word. 100% God's word. Chapter 1, verse 1, he said, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God. God and all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made in him was life and life the light of men the light shines in darkness and darkness comprehends it not we have a choice in life between light and darkness you know, the devil, he's real good at redefining words. He's really good in our culture at using people to change the meaning of words. An example is martyr. Uh, I think I posted it on my Facebook page. You, I'm pretty sure I did. A list of all the disciples and how they died. You might look through that. It's important for us to remember what a martyr really is. You know, Saul, who wrote uh, the letters to the churches, he became Paul. Saul became Paul. He wrote the letters to the churches. And the Bible says that he had a thorn in his flesh. And that was something that bothered him all the day. Now, the Bible tells us what it was. The very next scripture said it was a messenger of Satan to buffet him daily. So my, my daddy used to talk about that and preach about it. He said, I don't know, maybe it was because he remembered all the things he did to how many people he killed for being Christians. Maybe that's what it was. That could be it. Some people think his wife might have turned against him because it seems like he was single when he was doing the ministry and that he must have left a wife behind because he had high rank on the council which would have required being married at that time. That's what I've heard. Anyway, I've heard all kinds of things. How many know you can hear all kinds of stories and you don't really know what's true? And how many know that the Word of God is true, whether we get it or understand it or not? Well, I do know this. Paul persecuted the church when he was Saul. He drug people out of their homes. He had them put to death. He had them sold into slavery. He had them thrown into the Colosseum for sport. And he had to be bothered by that. And I want to tell you that it is okay. It is okay for you to be bothered by things that happened or things that you did in the past. It's all right. Forgive yourself for remembering those things. Okay? Paul remembered it all the time. Don't beat yourself up so bad because you can't seem to quite release that. You can't forget about it. How many know God forgets, but human beings just can't seem to forget? And so, what we, one thing we can do is we can pray, God, help me have a peace about my past. Help me just have a peace about my past, that I can release that. And I know that you forgave me of that. I know that that's washed away. I know that you're not going to hold that against me. When I die and stand before you, I am not going to have to recite every sin I ever did in my life because it's been removed as far as the east is from the west. I'm telling you right now, the devil is trying to cripple the church. The devil is trying to cripple the church by constantly reminding us of our sins. And I would say 
Paul was reminded of his sins. Paul had a thorn in the flesh daily, buffeting, a messenger of Satan's spiritual warfare against him. Paul was started more churches and won more people to the Lord than anybody in the Bible. And so I'd say in the midst of my faults and failures, when I don't do everything right, the Lord can still use us to reach people and lead them to heaven. He can still use us, even though we're not perfect. We've got to forgive ourselves and our minds. You know, if you feel limited and ordinary, then you qualify as the best material for God to use. If you don't feel like you have much to offer, guess what? God has a lot to offer through you. If you don't know what your future holds, join the club, none of us do either. But God does. And I trust Him today. How about you? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. Who is the Word? What's His name? Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. He is the Word. He is alive. He died on that cross. He was dead when they laid Him in the grave. But on the third day, He was alive. And he still is alive. He did not die again. In Hebrews it says he'll only die one time. I believe it's Hebrews chapter 6. He says Jesus only died one time. Once is enough to save all the human race. Whosoever will may come to know him. You know, today's philosophy seems to be blame everybody except self. Live your life as if you're a victim of all the problems in the world. And I would say Jesus turned that around. Jesus delivered us from that. We are not victims. We are victors. Amen? We are not conquered. We are more than conquerors. Amen? In Jesus Christ, we have favor above those who do not know him. You know, many, many times it seems that people plan their whole life out and then they just kind of add Jesus to it. And I would say to have true victory, I mean like you've never seen before. Instead of doing that, let him plan it out and you just follow. It's difficult. But it can be done. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Jesus is the creator of all things. He gives life. We are to highly value life. If we're a child of God, we're supposed to value life. In fact, it mentions it right here. He says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Now, I know that, now these particular plants are not alive. But I know that plants are alive, but it's not the same as the soul that lives in a human being. I know that animals are alive, and maybe they're a little bit higher than plants, but they're not the same as a soul that lives in a human being. I know that angels are alive, but the Bible says that we will be higher than the angels. You see, He created life in the human being, higher than any other life that He created. And He is the source of life. The devil is trying to get us focused on death. As a church, we can't focus on death. we got to focus on life. Because life in us is eternal. Yes, I remember the day I got saved. I was a five-year-old boy. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was at Shulter Baptist Church. Uh, we were having a revival. It was on a Monday night. About halfway back uh, in the church, I was sitting there by my grandmother. And the preacher had preached a great sermon. I don't remember his name. But how many know I don't have to know the preacher's name to get to heaven? Jesus knows my name. And so he said, have you ever been saved? I knew I hadn't. You know, I was... I wasn't necessarily a five-year-old genius, but I was smart enough to know that I had not been. 
And so he said, have you ever been saved? And I said to myself, no. And he said, if you would like to be, would you raise your hand? And you know, I didn't, at five years old, I didn't have all the inhibitions possibly. I, I'm so shy and reclusive now. <laughs> but back then, you know, it was like, sure, here I am. Five years old. If you've not been saved, would you like to be? Raise your hand. I didn't have to wait. I didn't have to be talked into it. You hear me? As adults, we let the things of spiritual world sometimes become so complicated because we don't understand it. We like to understand everything, don't we? We like to understand everything. Well, now let me rephrase that. I bet... Whether you understand it or not, I bet you still get in your car and turn the key on and go home. Whether you understand how it all works. In fact, I couldn't even start to tell you how a microwave oven works, but I use it. Huh? Now, I like fresh milk. And I, there's a, some folks in Eureka Springs that when I'm there, which I haven't been there hardly any much this year, with COVID and everything, I've been turning into a hermit. But uh, they bring me fresh milk. And I like to pour the cream off the top. And so had a friend of mine come over. We were talking about some things that we're going to do the play. And I got a jar of cream, and I'm sitting there going, y'all know what I'm doing? Somebody tell me what I'm doing. Churning butter. That's right. Churning butter. You shake it, and pretty soon that cream turns into butter. And I was sitting there thinking, maybe I should Facebook Live this. Probably nobody hardly even knows what that is anymore. And I thought, that is so much like how God does us. If we'll let him pour, we're the cream. How many know that we are the cream we have risen to the top. We are favored by God. We are His children. We are ten times better than the world, it says in Daniel, because we have followed Him. And you have got to see yourself that way because that's how God sees you. And you pour that cream in that jar, and in the hand of God, He's sitting there, and pretty soon He's going to make butter. Oh, I love butter. I love butter. We were fixing some lunch for some pastors this afternoon, and the ladies back there working so hard, and Larry and, and Janet and Tamara, and I can't name everybody, but anyway, so I'm walking by the pot of potatoes. I say, this needs something. Guess what it needs? Butter. Needs butter. So I'm glad that God doesn't tire out like I did. I'm shaking, shaking. I keep on shaking, I think. How long am I going to have to shake this before I get better? You know what I did? I made whipped cream. <laughs> oh, I love whipped cream. And so I had some whipped cream in my coffee. And I had a little brownie. I put a little sugar in my whipped cream, stirred it up. I had whipped cream on my brownie. How many know where I'm going with this? I don't either. <laughs> Let me tell you where I'm going. We're supposed to have lofty goals because the Lord has lofty goals for us. It doesn't matter if we reach that goal. We're going to be good whipped cream. We're going to be favored by God. You know, a missionary that gives their whole life to the Lord, they may live and only see 10 or 20 people come to know the Lord, maybe even less. But that's what they were there for. Billy Graham or somebody like that might see millions of people come to know the Lord. That's what they're there for. You're here, a part of a church that's making a difference. That's what you're here for. What's your purpose in life? God may use you to share, to sing, 
He may use you to pray with people. God has a purpose for you. You are in His hand. You are the cream of the crop. He's got many different things that He can do with you if you let Him. Jesus Christ created everything that was created. I don't want some atheist telling me that all this happened by chance because that's ludicrous. I told a guy one time, I said, let me tell you how ridiculous that is. If you had a semi-truck loaded full of dice, and that truck had a wreck on I-40, every single one of those dice would have to line up on the center line, all pointing up the snake eyes. That It would take that kind of a miracle for this to happen by chance, but you don't believe in miracles. There is no reason in atheism. There is no logic in atheism. There is no connection spiritually with nothing. You and I know all that was created was created by Him. You know, on... I had a guy ask me one time, why did God create me this way when I have so many problems? I said, look, he, it's like a seed. Jesus said, it's like a seed of corn. It's planted in the ground and dies so a new life can spring forth. And the Lord wants to take your old man and watch him pass away, wash away, and then bring up a brand new creation with a purpose. That's why we baptize people to show the old life has passed away and the new life has risen. And Union Valley, I'm here this morning to tell you that in 2020, when it seems like everything has changed, nothing has changed with God. He's still the only way to heaven. He's still the Word. He's still the creator of all life. God created sinners. God, the Bible says in Isaiah, God created evil. When I get there, I'm going to ask him why he did that. Why did you create evil? No, I'm just kidding. He knows it. But do you ever feel like that? Oh, Lord, why didn't you just make it where we don't have all these bad temptations and all these bad choices and all these bad paths? Why? Because he wanted to raise himself up a nation of people throughout the ages who would choose him. He wanted to raise up a nation that would live for him forever, a people of all walks of life, of all nationalities. In fact, it even says in Revelation that when the heavenly city is here on earth, that people from every nationality will come to and fro, out in and out of the doors of heaven. He didn't want to create a race of robots. He didn't want to create a bunch of people that would blindly follow him. He wanted to create people with a heart to love and a will to choose who would choose him and serve him and live with him forever. He has created all of us and he's given us new life. Now, off subject just a little bit, since we've been live streaming I don't have any idea what time it is. So if I get real close to 12, oh, I knew it. I knew it. Last week, y'all that missed last week, I got so wound up and I didn't have a clock and I preached till 1230. Some of y'all suddenly are glad you missed last week, aren't you? And we all stayed, I know. Amazing. When we get finished here this morning, we have several pastors that are coming to be our guests for lunch. And I need a lot of help moving chairs out and setting up about 15 tables as quick as we can. And I'll tell you why. Because we're all serving the Word of God, the one who created us all. The Word will endure, amen? The Word will save us. The Word is alive. 
The word is God and is from God. The rich young ruler walked away from the word and regretted it for eternity. How many know that Jesus Christ is Emmanuel? He is the mighty God, the Prince of Peace. He's the Rose of Sharon. He's the Messiah. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of all. He is the Lily of the Valley, the Prophet, Priest, and King of the human race. He is my Savior. He has forgiven me. He has built a house for me in His heaven. He is the one and only. He is the only way to love your family. He's the only way to lead your family. He's the only way to serve God. He's the only way to eternal life. Jesus Christ loves you so much. He allowed them to hang him on a cross. Brutally kill him. Why? Because our God honors a blood sacrifice. And Jesus had the only sinless, pure blood. So he sent him to be our sacrifice. You can pray to him. Ask him to forgive you of your sins and he will. You can commit your life to Him and He'll help you through life. And you can pray to Him daily and He'll give you the key to heaven.